Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. Today we're talking about Disgaea 6, and I'll be showing you the best way that I have personally found to farm item level points. So sit tight and get ready. 3 billion item points. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and clicking the video. It means a lot. If you haven't already, click that like and subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell so you never miss out on anything that I drop. Couple notes before we get started again today. Just as a heads up, if you're new to the channel and never watched one of my videos before, I put timestamps below to save you some watch time. But as a catch 22, be advised, if this is your first time watching this video and you skip ahead, you could miss important details. Either way, your choice, because the option is there. One last thing before we get going, just real quick, in today's video, I'm asking a favor of all my viewers. All I'm asking are for your thoughts of the video. You can think of it as sort of like a video audit of me by you. I ask that you watch the video and tell me at least one thing you really like and one thing I could change that would make you want to watch more of it. Just comment below in the comment sections. I don't know what I don't know, you know? Moving on to the reason you're here, Disguise 6 and item point farming. Don't worry, I got you. So for item point farming, basically what that is is what you see happening behind on the screen right now. That's what you're looking at. So today's video is going to go something sort of similar to this. We're going to discuss what item points are for any of those out there that may have just stumbled across this video and are, are new to this guy that don't quite know because frankly item points are sort of new whether you're a, a new this guy player or not. So we're going to cover that. Then we're going to discuss the process on how to get this going, what that is going to look like over time, and then I'm going to show you how to set that up. That way you're successful at doing this every single time. So the way it works with item point farming, and you can kind of think of that there's a lot of things happening right now that are kind of behind the scenes that I'm going to explain. You can think of this video sort of as a two, two-fold video, a two-fold process, because what's happening, not only am I farming for item points, but at the same time, we are leveling that item very quickly. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how long it has taken to, that I've been leveling this one up for sure, because I started it probably about 9 o'clock this morning, and it's about 2 o'clock now, and... I took the kids to go to a dental appointment and somewhere in between there the system fell asleep for some reason being in the dock and I restarted it. So I don't know exactly how long this particular run has been taken, but I can confidently tell you that on average, because I've done this a dozen times now and I'll show you that too as proof, that it normally takes about four hours to do this farming method. And like I said, you are not only farming for item points to further boost your stats for your characters, but you're also leveling those items very quickly. And that's why I consider this to be step three in maxing your stats. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this because it's been going for about four or five hours now. Let's just have us a look here. So, oh. So we've actually gained quite a few levels for this item. So like I said, it's been about four or five hours. I'm not exactly sure the exact time frame, but we're going to go ahead and leave. And I'm going to show you what I was mentioning earlier about, you know, what are item points, yada, yada, yada. So let's go ahead and just leave this item. And you can see I got a max item now. It was 9,999. So, what are item points? So, item points can be found here when you go to the item world menu. You just go to point exchange. And then you go to items. Now, for that run we just did, I've got just over a thousand items. You can see that there on the screen. 
and a lot of these I've locked because I was using them as a mental reminder of what I needed to level up next. Uh, so the locked ones won't get cashed in for points. But everything else that I picked up along the way will. So you can tell from that run that we got 423 million there. Now I know that doesn't seem like a lot for 884 items. And normally when you do this, it's not going to be. But we were in a lower level item, so a lot of the stuff we were picking, we were in this one here. So a lot of the stuff we were picking up along the way was lower level items. However, once you get into like the Rixasha traps and these mushroom soups that you see here, you can easily clear three, four, even five billion item points every time you do a four hour run on here. So if you're timing this right, in between your schedule and uh, you could possibly you know i come back every now and then to check on it here and there see what where it's at and i might emergency out like i did that time go into a new item start another one it just really depends but if you time this correctly throughout your day you could probably max out four or five different items and get the item points for that a day so at the end of all this you could probably get all of your items leveled up and a a hefty amount of item points by the end of the week because let's be honest this game pretty much plays itself and you ain't really gonna be doing a whole lot anyway previously in Disgaea 6 you had to do all that leveling in that item yourself uh, but in this one and in this version in Disgaea 6 it's almost like you work in a, a manufacturing factory and you're standing by a machine just hitting that button and producing parts that's really all this game really is I got like a thousand plus hours in this game already logged and i think probably only 250 300 of that is me actually playing this game um and most of that's probably just moving innocence around selling items off leveling characters and then setting it back up to run automatically again but this is where you find your item points and this is how you cash them in uh, you need items to get item points now if you don't understand items all that much just check out the legendary and unique innocent video that I made that'll explain that a lot more in depth than this video is going to but this video assumes that you've already watched that or you already know about that kind of stuff and we're just gonna move forward as such so each item depending on its rank its rarity and its tier, whether it's a normal item, carnage item, or Rixasha item, will determine the amount of item points you get. So obviously, the higher the rank, Rixasha items, you know, a rank 40 Rixasha item that's a legendary or an epic is going to get you more points. And I think the one that gives the most points is probably the trap because it's, you know, the highest one you can get on here. So let me just unlock this real quick and show you exactly how many points you can get. Now, you're not going to get a bunch of those like that. You're not going to be able to farm those. You Realistically, you know what? Instead, let's, let's look at the mushroom suit because you can get a ton of those. That is a Rixasha level maxed out epic 9,999 mushroom soup. You get a ton of these consumables. So let's look at that and see how much that gives you when you're farming these. So we're going to go to point exchange items, and we're going to find that mushroom soup. So you see that right there? It gives me 11 million points. 11.7 for a mushroom soup. Now, you can imagine if you're farming in a, a, tra a, a Rixasha trapeze hedron, and you're collecting a bunch of these, those points are going to add up real quick. And the longer you leave them in there... To farm items and the more you fill that inventory up the higher you can get with your item points so this is where they are this is how you cash them in and you just basically get item points by getting items uh, there is various ways that you can get items you can get items with uh, the filling out the bonus gauge at the end of every map uh, you can get items uh, from chest you can get items from killing enemies putting certain evil tees on your characters um, and you can steal them with your thief so there's various ways to get the items that you need for the item points so that pretty much covers everything you need to know about the item points now that we've kind of talked about what item points are and where you can look for that at 
Now I'm gonna show you why item points are so important. So when you're farming these item points, you're going to be using them to enhance the equipment, your final equipment that you want on your characters. For example, I have a bunch of these traps that I have here that I've been leveling and equipping to all my characters, but essentially what you're, want, what you're wanting is for your stats to look similar to the attack stat on this trap. Now I've done that with a few of my traps for this character, and I've also started another one for another one. Uh, but that is important and the very reason why you are farming for item points. Now, you won't get the full amount of the item points pre-Rixasha Ball. I think you can only get 300 billion. Now, it doesn't matter if you apply that 300 billion to three different items or you put it all on one item. Your character's stats pre-Rixasha Ball when you're farming for these item points will not raise more than 300 billion. Now that changes after you have defeated Brixasha Ball, you get the full amount, which is why my character here has 16 trillion in stats. And if I put that fetters on there to double that, it would be in the ballpark of 24 trillion in stats, which is basically what 20 star Rixasha Ball stats look like. That is why we are farming for these item points. Okay, so now that you know more about the item points and kind of how that works. Now let's move on to the process and what you're going to be doing to collect those points. And before we jump straight into the process, there's a few things that you're going to need to make sure you have before you start doing this that are going to help you along the way. So first thing you need is at least one emergency out. There is nothing more disappointing to have put your game into auto battle to level an item to only wake up and find out that your item is max level and you can't get out of that item without giving up and losing all that process and wasting that time spent trying to level that item so just make sure you've got some emergency outs the second thing that you are going to need is you are going to need eight combo makers for two different players now like I said earlier, you can check out my legendary and unique innocent video that'll explain to you how to get those. But you're going to need eight, and I recommend when you start this process, you focus on getting them in carnage items because it's easier. The last thing you're gonna wanna do when we're starting this up is there is a squad on here called the Item Adventure Squad or something to that effect, and I believe it is right here. You need to make sure that all four of your characters that you're using for this are in there and that this squad is filled out to the max. Okay, so here's how this process works. And this is the most important piece of information that you will get from this video. So when it comes to item point farming, the process, like I was saying earlier in one of my earlier videos, when I mentioned that the carnage items do still have value, this is where you are going to see that value, literal value, in the form of item points. Now I understand at this point, you're probably using Rixasha level items. But what you're going to do and how this works is you want to start with your consumables, preferably carnage item consumables. You want to start with, let's say, like I was saying, a mushroom soup because that's a rank 39 item so what you want to do is you want to start leveling those work your way down start leveling some of the other ones anywhere between you know level 35 39 somewhere in that ballpark and each time you come out you cash those item points in and then you move on to the next rank 39 item and level that item and you're going to do that for every category of an item your guns your your bows your spears so on and so forth and it's sort of like a snowball effect. And as you're leveling these items, every time you exit one, you're going to have more and more points that you can take from those Carnage items and use that to upgrade your Rixasha items. So the way it works is the you're going to do this for the Carnage items. That would be phase one. Phase two, once you've gotten a bunch of the carnage items done, you're going to turn around and do the same exact thing for your Rixasha items. 
And by that point, you should have some points put into some decent Rixasha items. And it shouldn't be as hard to start leveling your Rixasha items. That's phase two. So phase one and two are both pre-Rixasha ball. And then phase three, which is exactly the same as phase two, it's just post-Rixasha ball. You're just going to continue to level your Rixasha items and cash in those points. So that's the process. Okay, so now that we've been over what item points are and I've talked to you about how this process works, now I'm going to show you how your character setup needs to be. So for your character setup, all I do is I have four different characters. I have Zed, I have a thief, I have the war lady, and then I have Mayo. Now I'm going to show you their equipment and their demonic intelligence. So for equipment, just like I said earlier, Zed has the three carnage traps and all three of them have a combo maker. And then I did have a carnage sword on here, but after I beat Rixasha Ball, I just gave him the Neo Ball Sword and this also has a combo maker on it. So for my thief, the equipment that I have is just three level traps, you know, Rixasha traps, and then uh, a legendary pistol, which that doesn't really matter for your thief in the beginning. This is just what I've been doing as I've been going through and doing this process. The war lady, however, does matter for the equipment. It doesn't matter what equipment you use, but what does matter is the innocence that you put on the weapon. Just like I explained in my Rixasha 5 video, you want those innocence in there that paralyze and keep enemies in place that way your other two characters can run through these maps at the same time and then I just got the three traps that I've been working on and then I've got finally Mal for his equipment I just got those combo makers three of these are actually four of the all four of these are carnage items I believe actually no on second thought that one I do remember now that that is a legendary sword a Rixasha sword. So I got the one Rixasha and then the two, the three different carnage items here, all of which have the combo makers. So, like I said earlier on, I got the eight combo makers here. <clears throat> now, for demonic intelligence, for Zed and Mao, Mayo, Mao, however you pronounce it, I have his set up like this. Powerful foe is present. Move toward target. Normal attack but they're going to wait for others uh, and then go towards the skip gate move towards target enemy forces nearest unit and normal attack now mal and zed both have the exact same demonic intelligence setup i just copy and pasted it for both of them and as you can see here they are exactly the same no need to cover that twice for the thief, this one only focuses on stealing items. That's all this one does. So for the demonic intelligence, this one is if a chest is present, they target the chest. They use chest sweep. If it's not present, they target the enemy forces and they use grand theft. So the only thing this one does is focuses on getting items. That's it. And for my war lady the demonic intelligence is basically now the point for this one is uh, I want it to target level spheres and chests that's really what I want this one to focus on because as the other two Zed and Mao are running through killing the foes uh, this one is trying to target those level spheres to help level this item up even more as it's running through so because they're all in that item world squad also that increases the amount of times you see a level sphere <clears throat> and it also uh, for Zed and Mao when they hit a skip gate they actually get additional floor or different additional levels into that item so you got the war lady here getting extra levels and you got Mao and Zed getting extra levels when they hit that skip gate but for her demonic intelligence, it's 
If a level sphere is present, target the level sphere, move to the farthest valid attack range, use full strike. And for the next line, it's pretty much the same thing, except we're targeting chests, moving to the farthest range, and using full strike. And then enemy forces, move to the farthest range, use full strike. That is all I use for my item point farming. It's just these four characters here. Now earlier on, there might be some benefit to having a few other characters added in here to just go out and attack enemies, turn them in the chest and pick those chests up, or you could have more thieves doing more stealing, whichever. I just don't choose to do that because I like to go through these faster. Um, but as far as evil teas go, uh, the most important ones that I have on here, and you're going to see this a lot for people that farm in the item world because that's what these are for, treasure hunt, treasure appraisal, uh, and treasure hunter. Uh, these other ones don't really matter as much. They're just kind of on there, you know, because I want my character to be a able to attack. Uh, I'm getting stats while I'm doing it. And this one also is important, item over upgrade. When the, uh, when the unit defeats an item world boss, increase the item enhancement rate by 200,000. That comes from Mal. You just have to get him to create a scroll and give it to this character. Then, of course, auto recovery because I don't want my, my, my guys to die when they're in an item world. And then zombie revival. In case they do die, they can come back out. Now, I do think that for the zombie revival, I think that's once per floor, if I'm not mistaken. So... Once you go to the next floor, I think you get to use this again. I'm not entirely sure, but considering the fact that my item point farming changed drastically when I put this on there, I highly recommend that you put that on there as well. So for my thief, pretty much the same deal. Lucky Fanger, Treasure, Fang uh, treasure Appraisal, Auto Recovery, uh, Zombie Revival, and then you know just some stats and movement stuff that I put on there. For my war lady, now for this one, treasure hunt again, lucky finger. Three laws is very important for this one because you're nuking the field. You don't want to hit your guys. Multi-lock just to help kill enemies. Magic collection to recover SP to continue doing that full strike. That's pretty important for this one. Infinite reincarnation just for the stats. Zombie revival to make sure you keep going. Auto recovery to make sure you keep going. And for Mal... His are almost similar to Zed's, um, you know, item over upgrade, longhorn for attack, treasure appraisal, treasure hunter, uh, zombie revival. Those are all probably the most important ones. Three laws ain't really that important for him. I put it on there as a precaution. King's dignity, because we're, we're killing those gate guards, so you definitely want that on there. Um, and that's about it for the evil tees. So what I'm going to do next is because I was in a lower level item and you didn't really get to see the full payoff for the item points, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into another item. I'm going to go into a higher ranking item and I am going to start farming and go outside and cut my grass and cut out all that in between time and I'll show you how, much, how many points this really can get you to when this is all said and done. So we're just going to go into, let's say, this trap here. And we'll start the process all over again. And I'm just going to let it run. Okay, so now that we've gotten to the end of farming this particular item, let's go ahead and stop it and see how, much, how many item points we get for this trapeze hedron. So let's go ahead and... Use our emergency out, and leave the item, since it's already max level. And let's go to the item world and see how many points we got this time around. So, point exchange, cash them in, and as you can see, we're going to get about 3 billion points for that level 40 item. We've got about 1,300 1,383 items. Now, we're not going to get all those because, like I said earlier, some of these are locked. But we're going to get about 3 billion item points for farming that particular item. So, let's go ahead and cash them in. And there you have it.
So now we are here at the end of the video. Before we wrap things up, I did want to mention something I missed earlier that you can see in the video. Earlier when I was mentioning the setup for my war lady, I did not point out that she had four mogul unique innocence equipped. So I just wanted to throw that in there. So in summary, we talked about item points and what those were and how those are related to maxing stats. I talked about a few things you needed to help this be successful, and I showed you a couple different runs and what the results of this method would look like. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something. Don't forget to check out that description, and also don't forget to like and subscribe. Stick around because I've got a couple more steps to share with you before we wrap this series up. Thanks again. Winks out.